Hi guys, welcome back to Kids for Code. Today we will be looking at the intro to object-oriented programming. So, so with a review of our summary questions from uh, last week. So, how are strings represented in Java? They're represented by using an array of characters, and that's how we use to represent a string. So for question number two, use the string race car to answer the following questions. What is index of car return? This will return five, because if we look at it, it starts at R, starts at index zero. It'll be zero, one, two, three, four, five. And five, at index five, that's where the first instance of this car string is. Okay, for two B, what does substring three return? So we can go back to this string here and we can count zero, one, two, three. This will return everything from E to the end of the string. Therefore, it will return E car. For two C, what does the substring zero, two return? We can count by going zero, one, and then two, but it does not include the letter at index two, so only returns RA. Okay, so we'll be looking at the new material now. A class. So right here, a class will contain instance variables and methods. Here we have a cat class, and we can create as many cat objects as we want. So an object will have instance variables, I mean a class, and the instance variables are like the attributes of an object. So a cat could have a name, a weight, and an eye color. Those are its attributes. While methods, or what we call behaviors, or the actions of this object, is that the cat can purr, it can play, and it can nap, and it can do all sorts of things by using methods in this class. So next, we want to look at this basic, uh, the basic syntax of how to write a class in Java. So we start off by listing our instance variables. So for this cat op, cat class, we will have an instance variable for its name and age. Next, down here, we're going to have its method that it can play. A cat can play. So I'm going to go on. So all classes, you can create an object since an object is an instance of a class. Objects are created using constructors, and I'll show you that later in a demo. An object has attributes and behaviors, just like how a cat has attributes, its weight, age, name, eye color, and other stuff. It also has many behaviors, such as sleeping, eating, or playing, or even making sounds. Please note that methods are the same for each object, and the instance variable types are the same, but values may vary. This is pretty much means that when you create an object, it can have a different name, it can have different ages, it can have different eye colors. So that means an object will have different values for its instance variables, but all methods are the same. Like all cats, every single cat can eat, but not every cat has the name, the same name. So next, we're gonna look at the constructor. We're gonna have this method in our class. The constructor initializes the attributes or the variables of an instance of the class. So here we have the cat class, right? It has a name and has an age. So these are the parameters. The user is going to pass in two a string and an int. And then this is going to take in the n and it's going to store the string into the name and the int age into the age instance variable of this class. Once we do that, we can successfully create an object in our main function. So right here, we have two cat objects, cat1 and cat2. 
cat1 object now holds the name max and age 12. Here, as you can see, we're passing in a string max and an integer 12 into this constructor, this cat constructor here. The cat constructor will take the name and the age, pass it in through the parameters, and assign them to the instance variables of this class. It's the same for cat2. Cat2 will hold fluffy and the age of six. So next, we're going to look at mutator method. A mutator method allows the client to change or set the value of an instance variable. It does not return any value back. So technically, this is pretty much just setting the age, setting the instance variable for this class. So the age may be um, five years old, the cat may be five years old, but one year passes and it turns six, you want to change it to age of six. Therefore, you're going to call this method set age. You put in the uh, number you want to put in, which will be six, and then it's going to pass it down and it will set the instance variable to six. The next method we'll look at is accessor methods or the getter methods. This will pretty much just get the instance variable and it's going to return the instance variable, the value associated with this instance variable that we have created in the class. So right here, we will call get age and it will just return the age of this cat. Lastly, we're going to look at the this keyword. So the this keyword in Java is a reference to the current object you're accessing or calling a method on. Note that a class can have multiple objects, right? Many different cats. We can create many different cats. So we need to know when we're using, when we're calling a method or getting the right data from the correct object. Therefore, this just represents the current, the current object we're referring to or act, trying to access. So another thing we need to know is that we usually never name parameters the same as an instance variable unless you include the this keyword. So we can look over here. These two do pretty much the same thing, but this has string name. It passes name is the same as the instance variable name. Therefore, we must put this dot in front of name. This pretty much means we're referring to the object's instance variable name and we're assigning name which was passed in to that instance variable. What is more preferred in Java is setting the age if we can do like the first letter of the instance variable and we can easily assign it to the instance variable like this. One thing to take note of is this we should never do because name equals name will cause pretty much nothing to happen because it's not assigning name to the object's attribute or instance variable and nothing will happen. The variable will not change. So we're gonna go take a quick look at the demo. So we're gonna recap. So we have a class called cat. So we're gonna write public class cat. And then we're going to create our instance variables, which are the attributes of the cat. The cat has a name and it has an age. You can have other stuff like eye color or height or weight. So the first thing we want to do is create a constructor right here. The constructor right here will take in a name and an age. And once it takes in that, it will assign the appropriate values to the instance variables of the class. Next, this method is a behavior of a cat. We can have as many methods we want and as many behaviors for this cat. Next, we have the mutator methods, which is set name. This will change the name or set the name of the instance variable for this, this object. And set age will just set the age for this object. And you can also use this to change the age. An accessor method right here will return the value 
associated with the instance variable. So get name return name. So if a cat has the name Max, and you call get name to that cat, it will return Max. Here, it will return the age of the cat. Lastly, we'll look at the main function, and the main is used to initialize or create the objects. So as seen in the slides, we're creating two new objects here. We're creating a cat object, cat1 object named Max, and it has the age of 12, and a cat2 named Fluffy with the age of 6. We're going to print these two and we're going to see what we get. So as we print, we run, we're going to get Max is 12 years old, which is correct because Max is 12 years old right here, and Fluffy is 6 years old. And that's correct because Fluffy, as we pass it into the constructor, is six years old. We look at here and how we printed that. So first we did cat1.getName. Cat1, we go look up here, has a name of Max, plus the age, which is 12. Therefore it prints Max is 12 years old. So that sums it up for the generics of a class and the general syntax for how to write a class. So I'm going to go back and look at the summary questions. So after the class, you should be able to answer what are the two main features of a class. And secondly, knowing that the that student has a name, GPA, and grade level, how will you write the constructor for a class named student? So what we want to do here is we have a student, right? And it has these attributes. So how would we write a constructor for that? Question three is, how would you initialize a student object in the main function? And number four is, when will we want to use the this keyword in our program? We'll be reviewing these questions in our next lesson. And if you have any questions about this lesson, please head to Google Classroom and put down a comment.